Hi, welcome to chapter 7 of tutorial 7. We've covered the case decisions, case tracking and permits and the, the various um, states that the case decisions and permits may reside in. If they're in draft mode, you'll see a draft block which is not available to the public until you've published your permit or case decision. The, the last step, if you like, related to a case is the comments. So, if members of the public comment, they are clicking on the Add New Comment link, and this is going to generate a little box below the case. Um, so, let's do that and add a comment, even though we are um, heritage officers at the moment. And you can see, perhaps you're communicating with your uh, committee members, um, and might prefer to use the commenting module for this. So, let's add a comment, and it's very simple hit save. And this will now, because of the Heritage Officer role, it will reside in the committee comments uh, block. Um, it's not typical for Heritage Officers to do this. Um, this is generally left for the committee members themselves. Um, but the process is the same for uh, members of the public or registered conservation bodies. It's just their roles in the system which separate them out and at the bottom of the case. If you'd like to close the comment, so once you've passed the decision on the case, you need to close the comments because any new comments made on the heritage issues of the case are no longer going to be taken into account once the decision has been passed. So to close the comments, it's quite simple. Click on Edit and go right down to the bottom and Comments block and click on Closed. Okay, and that's it. Save. That's all you need to do to close the comment. So when you make the final decision or final comment on a case, remember to go down to the bottom before you um, finish up and close the comments. So that will remove the Add New Comments link. You can see it's now disappeared and it's less confusing for the members of the public um, about the commenting process. I'm going to open the comments again because this is my demo case and I use it all the time for demonstrating the comments. Okay, um, let's go back to our dashboard and explore the use of SARS for various issues. So, um, one of the things you'll be interested in is your monthly reports. So, to generate a, a very simple report, in version 2 we're working on customizing more reports for the data going into SARS, but at this stage most case officers are interested in the uh, the dashboard uh, view of their cases. So you can choose all the cases that you have processed and where you're the case officer um, and then export it to an Excel file. Now if I was logged in as one of the other case officers producing real cases, you'd see lots and lots of different cases listed here. And they can control the status that they would like to see over here. So if you're ge generating a monthly report, you would sort by the post date. Um, you might be choosing all the cases that are closed to show that you've closed them, or your recently received cases or pending and under assessment. So or you're going to combine those queries into to one big report. It, 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 it depends entirely up to you how you'd like to, to format it, and this will differ from Provincial Heritage Authority to SARA and so on. The primary case officer is you, and then other case officers that have been attached to the case are listed after your name. Um, if you're not the primary case officer, you'll see these sorted in different um, group, ta group views over here in the same list. Um, then if you would like to view, by default, as I say, you, all the, the um, status anything other than closed is usually viewed over here but you can view your closed cases by clicking on apply and uh, they are on and at the stage for, for this case officer. Below the cases, um, my cases is the cases on agenda which we've already shown you um, and those are all cases where a meeting has been set under admin and where the status of the case is on agenda. That's very important to remember. And this helps you to generate a, um, a committee agenda, which can be dumped straight to Excel, and you can then clean up the formatting as you like. Under Explore, you can go to Cases and then Permit Listing. So for all permits that have been issued, 
you can also generate a report. So let's click on SARA, and here we can filter out all the various types of permits. Um, let's leave it as everything, um, and click on Apply. And these show us all the permits, and again, uh, we can export that list to Excel. If we would like permits just for the last month, then we would pick the uh, month, let's say November, um, and let's do November again, and let's do the end of the month, well, 30th really, and the first. Okay, and we can increase the number of items, let's click on 50, but it won't won't have that many. Okay, so there's no permit for SARA in this month. Let's do the previous month. Uh, no, not all either there. Um, let's just perhaps choose all. And let's increase the range. Um, say is greater than and is less than right much better okay so let's um, pick out um, all of our permits, so let's move that over there, and I'm interested in, yep, that's fine, okay, so here we filtered out to the permits, it matched our query, so you, you, you get the idea, so remember the dates, those are quite useful, and then the types of permits can be filtered, you can even do it by the permit ID, or who issued the permit, so uh, let's do Grazia, um, let's blank these out and change the two. case officer who'd like to look at their um, permits that they've issued and again you can dump this to Excel, sort by the various columns for the dates or the, the types or the names of the permits and the activities and you can very really easily generate a report summarizing all the permits you've issued. Um, under the um, common due date that's very useful um, this sorts your cases by the due date specified under other references and this is always used um, by the heritage officers for finding the NEMA uh, or MPRDA due dates for comment. Um, but it might apply for a court case, for instance, where um, certain decisions and letters are required before a certain date. Uh, and then to sort by the due date, and we can see descending or ascending order all the cases um, that are, are applicable. And this would normally be done per case officer. So let's pick out uh, Catherine. Um, let's do that. Great. Okay, so these are just uh, where Catherine Smuts is attached to the case officer field and the um, the listing changes dynamically and again you can sort by the type of case um, so this is quite a useful report as well for listing your cases and um, what status they're in at the moment um, under the uh, the other two missing info um, uh, and unassigned cases we've covered already but missing info was an update report that we created to help um, with uh, missing PDFs and GIS, so that won't be normally used anymore by you. Um, and then content summary you might find very really useful as well. You can click on that. And here you can choose, say, heritage cases, apply, 
and pick your username. So let's do um, applicant. And we'll see only this one case is listed here where applicant was the author. Um, and then don't forget about my content as well. The my activities log is all content that you have edited or revised. So here we can see all of the um, nodes below have been edited by this um, user account, the applicant user account. And again, you can um, filter by the dates to show your edit log for the month. Um, for objects managers and curators, they would use this to track all the um, activity by their curators in updating objects um, information because often they're not the um, authors of the original objects information, they're updating the content on the system. So the revision history is the only way to see how much has been done over a certain month, for instance. Uh, right, let's uh, stop the t this chapter over there.